There are times that things linger in and out of our lives for years, and sometimes even for decades. Passions, ideas, desires, love. We all have that one thing in the center of our hearts, but in the back of our mind that we keep pushing to the side. I often say many of us are living the life that we created, and not the existence that was created for us. I'd like to share a little bit of my life story with you because it took me nearly four years to realize my purpose and maybe through my little story, I could help you identify yours. And I remember being a little boy about six years old in Queens, New York with my father in the driveway of our home. And I said, Daddy, um, I want to tap dance. And um, the look on his face kind of said everything to me. <laughs> now, just to give you a frame of reference, my mother and father are both from the beautiful island of Trinidad and Tobago. So my 6'2 dad looks down at me and says, that is not for boys. <laughs> and buys me a baseball bat the very next day. Nearly a year later, my parents separate. And my dad takes my brother and I to Trinidad and Tobago with the grandparents. I just start getting adjusted. And then he comes back and gets his boys and takes us to Baytown, Texas. Now, I'm not sure how many of you guys know Baytown, Texas, but it's about 20 minutes right outside of Houston. In less than a year, I went from, I said, hip, hop, hip it to the hip it to the hip, hip, hop, you don't stop, to, and tell what good music playing, and are you standing, bidding, 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 to, there's a little girl in our neighborhood, her name is Charlotte Johnson, and she's really looking good. I love them all. I was like the confused eight-year-old. <laughs> a year later, I get to the fourth grade and I meet some guys who are into popping and break dancing. <laughs> Naturally, I gravitated to those guys because, hey, it's dancing. And it was great because it kept us out of trouble, selling drugs, doing drugs, fighting like a lot of our friends were doing. And we did this for a little while. But then there came a point in Baytown, Texas, where if you were still dancing, doing that old robot, uh, you got laughed at. Or, or. <laughs> they called me the rerun. I thought it was a compliment, but I don't think they meant it that way. <laughs> so, uh, everybody else was rapping at that time. So naturally, following the train, I started rapping too. And I quit dancing because there was nowhere to dance. Now, I want you to pay attention to how many times I tried to dance. It wasn't working out for me, or I just quit dance altogether, okay? So a couple years later came the era of the trendy social dances, and we're going to this party, my friends and I, my rap partners and I, and um, they were like, man, when this song come on, I'm gonna do this dance. The Robocop. And I'm gonna do this dance, the Roger Rabbit. <laughs> and the other dance was the Steve Martin at the time. I couldn't do those dances. For some reason, my, my body was not like, meshing well with these dances. So they thought it was funny to laugh at me and make fun of me for like an hour. I was frustrated, embarrassed, humiliated. I said, that will never happen to me again. I went home that night. I cleared the living room floor. And I danced for like five and a half, six hours. So like four in the morning. I learned every move I could think of. But it was also the time that I realized I wanted to be a professional dancer. Now, I didn't know there was such thing at the time as a dance studio where people actually trained to dance. I just knew <laughs> what I saw on MTV. <laughs> a couple years later, I get to my junior year in high school, and I'm like, Dad, I want to move to California. And uh, I wasn't trying to pursue a career at 16. I was trying to reunite with my brother when he got out of the military. He went to California to pursue music. So, um, surprisingly, my father says, okay, pack my bags, go to Long Beach, California with my brother and like six guys in a studio apartment. You know what that's like. Um, 
frame of reference here, I'm 16, my brother's 21, and he's now my legal guardian. Okay? So, my brother has a rehearsal for a showcase he's doing for Virgin Records the night that I get there. And I'm like, they ain't seen no moves like this, son. They ain't seen no moves like this. Wait until I get up in that rehearsal and show them some stuff. His manager, his dancer, everybody's gonna be there, so I'm gonna show up. Sit the rehearsal. It was over, it was my chance. I jump up, put on my cassette tape, that long ago, and I start going in. I stop, and I'm like, and I look back, and everybody's like, <coughs> laughing at me. Man, that must be that, um, that, that down south dancing. Is that the square dance in Texas? I'm like, well, we don't do that. I hate this California, man. That's ha go hammer. And I was like, I had put so much time into learning this, and it still wasn't really appreciated. It, it wasn't where it needed to be, really. My brother enrolls me in school. I meet a couple of people who are into dancing. We start dancing together. I start developing a style and a real passion for this thing, you know? And my new school had a dance studio. Fantastic. Okay, so I graduate high school. Um, I go to college for photojournalism and dance. And I'm 18, so I, I get an agent. I'm doing commercials, music videos. I'm touring as a dancer. So I'm working as a professional, but I'm still trying to find myself, you know? So I'm writing raps and reggae songs just to pass the time on the planes and stuff. And then I get this one audition, and they are like, uh, we want you to rap these four lines for us. And I get to the audition, I look around, and there's like 20 dudes waiting to do my same part. And I'm like, well, how am I going to stand out? OK. My turn came. I got in the booth. I just flipped it on them. Why walk? One said, you could have run white talk. talk. They said, when you could have sing. The director breaks into the room and goes, young man, that's going to be heard nationally. Oh, that was what? Got a little inspiration. Picked up, started writing more reggae songs. My friends joined me. They was like, yo, you good at this? We got a manager. We're opening for a major recording artist. We're in the studio all the time. Then I got a single deal. I have come. I know what I'm going to do now. You know what? I don't want to dance anymore. Don't ask me to do a moonwalk or nothing. I'm going to be a reggae dance hall artist, and I'm going to counsel my people through positive music. That's what I'm going to do. So I pack my bags and I move to Florida to pursue reggae dance hall music. But while I'm recording my album, I'm working these weird temp agency jobs in different offices every week. And uh, I'm like, maybe I could teach dance to make a little extra money. Right? So before you know it, I have to quit my day job because I'm teaching like 25 classes a week. And uh, more commercials, more music videos. I'm torn again. Things are good. One day on a flight to Germany, and if you don't know, the flight's nine hours. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> I was trying to keep myself occupied. So I started meditating and giving thanks about my life because, well, growing up where I grew up, and being able to experience what I've experienced is quite the blessing in my life. A lot of people that I grew up with are either dead or in jail. So, thinking, I had a brother who was a role model who kind of kept me out of trouble. He prevented me from following the crowd every time. How could I be that for other kids who don't have that kind of leadership in their lives? Two months later, I arrived back from Europe. And the first thing I do is apply for a 501c3 not-for-profit organization. We were established in 2007, and today we save and enhance the lives of teens and youths through after-school programming. Brighten their future, give them more hope, give them more options, help them to be productive, contributing citizens to their communities. And um, with it being taken out of school, I feel like I have a lot more work to do. Now, the reason I want to tell you so much about my life is I wanted you to see how many times I tried to dance, it wasn't working out for me, or I just quit dance altogether. Okay? Um, but it kept coming back. It kept calling me. It was the path to my purpose. And the purpose to my path is to enhance the lives of people, particularly children, in my community and communities all over the world. And I'm living my heart full every day. 
And that's something I wish for every man, woman, boy, and girl. So I'll leave you with this. If there is something lingering in the back of your mind, but in the center of your heart, don't ignore it. Give it some good thought. Put it into action. And things take time. Remember that. There are many people out there who will benefit from that one thing that only you can provide. You may not be able to change the world, but you may be able to touch somebody who can. I often say, many of us are living a life that we created and not the existence that was created for us. Many of us are living a life we think people expect of us and not the life we expect of ourselves. Let that sink in. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you a question that I think you already know the answer to. What is your purpose? <laughs>